Hi friends, welcome back to The Cigar Scribe. Today I have the pleasure of reviewing Elisa Childers. Now, if you don't know, I've been outspoken to her or will be on my podcast. But in light of that, I'm actually uh, responding to the book that Holly Pavek has done, and I've made my own book that I am currently writing through, and I've given my story on NAR. So if you're Lisa Childers, you may want to check out Patreon where we have that loaded. And also, we will be reviewing you in mid-February of the 15th, I think, is when we review you. And I use explicit language because, well, I'm processing uh, CPTSD. But moving on, I'm actually going to be reviewing a video of hers where you can find her on, well, pretty much any social media. And I've engaged her on social media, so she probably knows who we are. But at any rate, let's go ahead and dive into her take on a kind of conundrum thing that's going on here on the Escar Scribe uh, TikTok and video. Yeah, let's dive into All right, friend. Okay, friendly friends, we're going to be diving into Christless conversation. Com- uh, com- conservatism and the LGBTQ conversation posted by Elisa Childers. And we're going to go ahead and dive into this beautiful video. It's all over the place, but let's go ahead and dive into it today. And notice how giddy and utterly excited he is. Um, I do find that he's, I don't think he's LGBTQ. I do think, however, that my camera is off, but there we go. What wonder. Okay, so let's dive into it today here on the Escort Scribe. And uh, we're going to be talking about how there are some things that I strongly believe that overgeneralizations are made in this video, and I think it's very harmful. Now, if Elisa Childers, if you watch this video, and she probably will sometimes later, realize that we're the largest ex-gay media in the world, and we are also leading in the world of uh, biblical counseling in regards to gender theory. So let's dive into that with our work of DTT and IDDS that you can find on Patreon. But let's dive into this video, shall we? And we have to understand, too, then. This is a nation and it's not a, it's not a church. But once we get that, that understanding there too, that LGBTQ issues, it's ruining the church. So again, um, no matter what LGBTQ you do, we're always going to ruin the church. So that's the message that you start the video with, Elisa Childers. I don't think that's the best video. I think that sends a very ignorant statement. And I think that's one of the worst video clips you can start a video with. So I think you're going to have to start having video clips where you don't sit there and blame all of the LGBTQ. Because basically that stance also that also blames ex-gays. Let's dive into it a little bit more. And it's also going to ruin this nation. <laughs> I want to try and at least touch on the LGBTQ plus issue as it relates to crisis conservatism, because that's something I've been sort of alarmed about a little bit is that there seems to be some unholy alliances, uh, things. And you mentioned earlier in the podcast, there's a bit of a punting. So, so again, um, when she talks about crisis conservatism and LGBTQ, um, half of LGBTQ um, are spiritual. So that's just not true. And I think that's just that's ignorant based on statistics. But go on. Talk about about the crisis conservatism of how it might manifest in LGBTQ plus conversation. Yes. And the alphabet is very long now. But I think yeah. if we just stick to the LGBTQIA plus, I get that. Okay, so he says stick to LGBTQIA+, and then... Oh, yeah, there might be some two in there or something, but what I'm seeing is, like, LGBTQ. We just focus. So, he says focus on LGBTQ, but then listen to what he says. So he actually doesn't say that. Listen to the next part. Focus on that. Uh, get rid of all those nonsensical letters. All these letters are nonsensical. LGB, lesbian. There you go. So he ignores queerness, and that actually is a hallmark in ex-gays. So he's very in- uninformed. He's making an overgeneralization, and he's clearly ignorant. Let's go on. Being gay, bisexual, as been punted. There you go. So he just says LGBTQ, then he's selling LGBT, uh, LBG. So he's just, like, very biased because he's – obviously he's a person that has not spent a lot of time around ex-gays. And like we are reporting on a regular basis, we have ex-gay stories. We talk about them. It's very clear that they do not have a, a very open understanding of what is currently going on in gender studies or the ex-gay holiness movement. By the conservative party. They have said that this fight is over, that uh, gay marriage is now legalized. That is not what all of the LGBTQ is saying. Again, the, the clearly uninformed – um, gay people and people that are okay with uh, gay marriage, and I'll say marriage in quotes because that's not a marriage. That's, that's basically just some civil union recognized by uh, the country. Ma- marriage is between one man and one woman. That's been established by God. We can't redefine it. We don't have the ability to play God and redefine it. And so- we talked about this a lot of times about when you're talking about law. I agree with this point, but let's go on to the next point. Well, God, hey, we now got a different idea of what, what marriage is. They have punted that issue because they know there is some voters out there that are going to be middle. 
Again, they haven't punted that issue. This is an ongoing thing in the LGBTQ. Ex-gays are talking about this on a regular basis. We're part of the LGBTQ. Again, he just completely ignores the LGBTQ because he doesn't understand queer theory and he doesn't understand conservative queer theory or former LGBTQ, so he just makes overgeneralizations yet again. Right, that either are lesbian, gay, or bisexual. Again, he ignores queer theory, he ignores queerists, he ignores queer studies, he, he ignores Christian queerists that are bringing gender studies, many of these studies they quote from on a regular basis. Let's go into it. That may vote for people like DeSantis or Trump, or they might like Vivek Ramaswamy, or they might like some aspects of the conservative party. Things like gays against groomers. They do some some moral work, I guess. So as a person who supports gays versus groomer and I'm ex gay and I'm a part of the kind of like the work that they do and support the work that they do, it's again, it's just demonizing all the LGBTQ with nothing redeemable. We could say like, yeah, there's some people that are fighting against the uh, abuse of kids and sexualization of curriculums in, in school, but it's like an oxymoron. It's not an oxymoron when there's an ex gay movement and he clearly doesn't know about it. Um, it's like thieves against murderers. Okay. It's not thieves versus murderers. It's, it's, it's more like um, priesthood versus priesthood, but let's go on. And it doesn't really make sense much at all, but they're not being invited into. Well, you know, maybe you should sit down, Mr. Hot Fancy Pants, and like go actually sit down with a, a bunch of ex-gay individuals and maybe you go educate yourself on what's currently going on for the last year. So that obviously you're out of touch with the reality. The conservative party. And there is also tons of people who are not in the conservative party that are bringing great change and godliness, and even some aspects of progressive leaders bring this up. I know a lot of people are going to say, they're like, all right, yes, these politicians, they aren't running for pastor in chief, they're running for commander in chief. <laughs> Maybe Ramaswamy has brought that up. I put that in a YouTube video. It's a funny little line, like, yes, that's true. Like, yes, we understand that you want to have your own version of the separation between church and state. Like, we wouldn't really have this state without Christ Church. <laughs> and we have to understand, too, that. This is a nation. So, of course, the Christ Church means that LGBTQ voices that are former LGBTQ, we don't have equal say in the, in the church because he's proving this to be the case. This is why we consider this other side, because our voices are basically shut off and we don't have opinions that are listened to in the, in the gay community or the church. It's not a, it's not a church. But once we get that. No, it's a, uh, a authoritarian regime in which we're not able to voice out anything because we're not trusted and we're held to double standards. The understanding there too that LGBTQ issues it's ruining the church. You're right. You know it's ruining the church because the ever straights don't want to admit things that he's about to focus on. So let's let's go ahead and see how um, ex gays are are ruining the church. Let's dive into that. And it's also going to ruin this nation if we. Okay, so we're going to also ruin the nation. We okay. continue to allow people to now call these things marriages, uh, let sexual depravity run rampant. Now, again, like ex gays and former LGBTQ, theologically, that's a long conversation. But yes, there's still a lot of heterosexual sexual immorality. Yes. Oh, yes, 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 yes. But, but again, like you guys can hold long standing positions in the church. We don't have that set standard, and we have a other set standard where we can't even in the modern day be found on social media, but yet you guys believe that you dominate the conversation, you ever straights. Okay, let's go. We will always, always mention that, but if the conservative party is going to say the foundation of America is the family. And that means screw over ex-gay voices and ignore them and demonize the LGBTQ further, even with the great attempts, nothing they do is good. It doesn't give way to revival. It doesn't give way to awakening. Go on. And we're going to redefine what the family looks like. You're also going to redefine what the church looks like, apparently. But I digress. It's a disservice to children that have... It's a disservice to people who are children and ex-gay when you don't have our voices or experience acknowledged and books written and you toss out all queer theory books and la la la. Go on. Uh, two dads in the home or two moms in the home? Uh, Yes, because they will always show, apparently, show their children things, even though, you know, good parents know to do good things. That's written in scripture. Obviously, they're going to become cultists and they're going to raise the dead and like summon the forces of Mordor or something. OK, go on. The service of these people to make them believe that they can basically go through sodomy just because they have their own idea of what love is. Like all they're doing is punting the situation because they feel like the again, all they're doing over generalizations. Go on. You're so smart. Dylan has swung so far that this is what we need to do to, to get votes. And I think it's incredibly dangerous. And that's why I really hope that we have more solid pastors that give people a biblical understanding. What he means by this are pastors that have never dealt with homosexuality and or few that have. So it's very biased. Go on. We still love these people dearly. Yes, but you hold us to a standard that is not obtainable and we don't give we're not given room to speak. But go on. So, so much. We love it enough to give them the truth. Except for the same authority, power, when we repent, when we change. Go on. Um, but we don't see adultery being promoted. We don't say like, hey, you know, yeah. adultery, like we're now in the same. 
you know, um, you do see that normalized in several places. You do see several pastor kids doing all sorts of things and excuse and holding power and position in the church. Age where it's like, you know, you just don't feel like you can get, get enough from your one significant other. So just kind of like get those hall passes. Um, I think we're seeing kind of the same sexual morality here with the LGBTQ issues. And the final thing here is I, I really don't believe there is, bisexuality is just skyrocketing with younger people, especially since.